Welcome to Canada! Welcome to Vancouver! Alright, Vancouver, I've heard so much about you. I'm super excited and like everybody says Vancouver is a melting pot of cultures. You know, Vancouver is a very pretty city. It's like wherever you go, it's clean, it's very like neat and just look around. Granville Island is already... It has a postcard picture perfect image. But first, what is Granville Island? Just 10 minutes away from downtown Vancouver, Granville Island is a man-made peninsula, a photogenic village where you spend the whole day shopping, eating, peeking at artists shaping their sculptures, looking at whiskey being distilled, beer being brewed. And the main draw is the public market. Beautiful produce from all over the world, no big chains, just local farms. But with all things good, the question was, has it become a tourist trap or is it truly good and locals do actually come here? Two steps in and you wake up instantly by a whiff of coffee so potent that your eyes keep dancing off of butchers cutting fatty slices of hamon, spicy bratwurst to candied salmon, Canadian maple syrup to Belizean Mary Sharp, there's chocolate fudge pouring, there's wok sizzling, 200 varieties of tea, cheese, BC cherries, gelato, sorbetto, croissants to gingerbread cakes, all made daily right here on Granville Island. Previously a no man's land of containers and warehouses, but now a Vancouver's Disneyland for foodies. And I mean it in ways both good and bad. But let me tell you why. First, let's taste the food. Salmon chowder pot pie from a la mode. Alright, I got the salmon chowder pot pie. Sounds good. Okay. Oof. Oof, oof, oof. Look at that. Ooh. You can see the steam coming out of it. It's kind of, today it's very sunny, but not too cold. But. Eating soup in this type of weather is extra satisfying. Okay, I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, look at those socks. Mmm. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, look at that big chunk of salmon right here. <laughs> oh, the salmon is a little smoked actually. Mm. The pastry itself is very thin and just very buttery. You can just see how it just ebbs and flows inside. And look at that salmon. Oof. It's safe to say that Vancouver is one of the most expensive cities. Like, for example, this soup just cost me 1650 Canadian dollars. So I would say. For this amount of soup, it's delicious, amazing, but it's, it is on the expensive side. And I think the menu items always range from, on average, always range from like almost 20 to 30 all the time. And with US dollars, you think, okay, I have like a 25% discount, right? If I really lived in Vancouver, in Canada, and if I was working a minimum wage job, it would be nearly impossible to keep up with the expenses here. If you come here during the summer, do not rent a car. I feel everybody complains about the parking situation here. It's nearly impossible to find parking during the summer and when everybody just wants to come to Granville Island to get the goodies. You know? So I'd rather just take an Uber or do the public transportation. Vancouver is surrounded by water on three sides and by mountains to the north, making it one of the top 10 cities to live in. So naturally, I had to taste the wonders of British Columbia by getting salmon and tuna sashimi from Omi Japan. They say actually outside of Japan, Vancouver has the best sushi. So let's give it a try. I used to dab my sushi all over, all over with soy sauce, but now I'm just focused on the flavor of the meat, so I'm just soaking it a little bit with soy sauce, a little bit of wasabi. Mm. 
You wake up, make your fluffy pancakes, and slather on the liquid gold. That is, maple syrup. Odds are it's going to be either American or Canadian. So as we're in Canada, who makes 75% of the world's maple syrup, why not give a Canadian maple syrup cheesecake a try? This beautiful box, Stewart's. There's a whole story on this box. And the most Canadian dessert, they said. Canadian maple cheesecake. No wonder they say Canadian maple syrup is the best. Wow. This is this would pair really nicely with just black coffee in the morning. This is like a monument that the city commissioned these Brazilian designers, Brazilian artists to put. So the city initially commissioned it for like they said maybe fifty thousand dollars would be enough, but then it actually cost hundred and eighty thousand dollars. This thing kind of became a symbol of Granville Island. On the way to the brewery, I stumbled upon Liberty Distillery, where you just want to get stuck in time, drinking whiskey, smoking cigars, and arguing about which mountain is best to ski, Cyprus or Seymour. But craving beer, I made a mental note to myself to circle my way back. Juicy IPA? Tastes like beer. English mail. Tastes like beer. Oh, well, actually, these mix nicely together. It's like drinking berries here. Super in a rush. They're just, you know, leisurely walking, looking at the surroundings. Even at the uh, market that we went to, it was like, I was like, come on, come on, next, 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 next. But then people were just, you know, enjoying their time there. And I'm like, okay, maybe I should take a step back and kind of chill too. Granville Island Brewing is not only an institution in Vancouver, but in all of Canada, being Canada's first microbrewery since 1984. And I was relieved that they didn't succumb to hipster trends, making beers with crazy unicorn colors and pungent taste. Mostly light and refreshing, the craziest being with caramel toffee notes. And what goes really well with beer? Fries. I gotta taste the famous Canadian snack, the poutine. Finally, I get to eat the infamous poutine, the Canadian uh, staple dish that everybody talks about. But I thought actually that I'm gonna see poutine everywhere, on every menu, but it's actually not. I think it's because Vancouver is such a, like a, you know, a lot of ethnicities, a lot of different uh, food that poutine kind of gets overshadowed by it. Because every blog, every tourist guy tells you, poutine, poutine, poutine. But then I, I really didn't have the chance or the opportunity to find poutine. And today at the brewery, I'm like, hey, hey, let's try it. This is a thick cheese curd right here. But I don't think I would come to Vancouver to eat poutine. You know, I think I would come to eat, come to Vancouver to eat really good Asian food, um, really good sushi. Gooey, saucy, and extremely filling. If I was hungry from skiing or snowboarding in the mountains, this would be my go-to. If you go and search about Vancouver, top things to do would be number one is Stanley Park. But I don't think I'm gonna go there because I won't have food. Oh, I wanna talk to people. So you know what? Let the next guy do it. You can smoke weed literally anywhere here, and 
it's mm -hmm. like, and then you'll, you'll smell it almost like anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Like, of course, not inside or anything. Like uh -huh. that, but yeah, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah. I would say we're definitely oversaturated. We have like a lot of dispensaries. It's almost like one every like one every like three blocks or two mm -hmm. blocks or something like that. Have you heard of Amsterdam? People smoke and vape here like no one's watching. Legal since 2018, cannabis use is higher here than anywhere else in Canada. And the province of British Columbia, where Vancouver is, claims to have some of the best in the world, calling it the BC Bud, a potent weed that grows in fertile soil and plenty of rain. You know what they say when in Rome. I, I feel like a giant. Granville Island gives a sense of a theme park, with boutique shops and souvenir stalls, with the theme of industrial chic, and the rides being the market, the restaurants, the boats. The public market is not a fast-paced market with cheap food where you smell the fish and step on a greasy floor, but a beautiful, slow-paced hipster market where you lazily walk through neatly lined stalls, patiently wait for your dry-aged beef, and calmly eat, gazing at the Vancouver skyline. It's designed to make you spend the whole day on the island, your whole paycheck if you can. And after spending time on Granville Island, I left visually satiated, but with a stomach half full. Luckily, I have the rest of Vancouver to explore. 